First of all, it is a pleasure to do this presentation on the online international meeting for users of Open Phone, organized by Joseph Nagy. In this work, I will talk about the implementation of the wall slip under a condition in the Open Phone framework, and is mostly based on the implementation of the Navia slip and non-linear slip boundary conditions into the leading open source computational fluid dynamics library OpenFOAM. My name is Celio Fernandes and I'm a postdoc researcher on the new university in Portugal under the supervision of Professor João Miguel Nobrega. The presentation outline is the following. First, I will describe the motivation which lead us to implement the wall slip boundary conditions on the open phone computational fluid dynamics library. Next, we establish the main objectives we intend to achieve with the implementation of the wall slip boundary conditions. Then, the implementation for the linear and non-linear Navier slip boundary condition will be shown on the section 3 and subsequently on section 4 the numerical results obtained for the Newtonian and viscoelastic fluids on the Poisil flow will be verified against several analytical solutions. In the end, the conclusions of the work will be given and future contributions will be addressed. Let's begin talking about the main reasons which lead us to perform this study. The motivation which leads us to implement the wall slip boundary conditions is related to the optimization of the extrusion die design process so that we can obtain optimum profiles in the extrusion process. On the top figures you can see an example of an unbalanced a balance flow and a balance one which was obtained by an optimized extrusion die. Additionally, we also want to study to what extent the presence of lubricants that migrate to the wall and prom promote an apparent slip velocity will help on the flow distribution. As you can see on the figure at the bottom of the slide, the left figure shows that the absence of slip is restricting the flow on the bottom part of the geometry. But on the right figure, we can see that the flow is more uniform in each cross section due to the presence of lubricants on the fluid rheology, which promotes an apparent slip velocity. Therefore, the main question is then to understand how the wall slip velocity should be imposed numerically. In such a way, it has physical meaning. In this slide, one can see the difference between a velocity profile with no slip and with slip. The lower part of the figure zooms of the area in the vicinity of the wall, in the way we intend to implement the wall slip boundary condition. For the case of the usual no slip boundary condition, the velocity components are all set up to zero, while for the wall slip velocity, US, we define it as a function of the trans tangent stress vector tau t, which leads us to some finite non-zero velocity at the wall. Thus, the objectives for this work are now presented. The objectives of the work are twofold. First, we want to implement the linear and non-linear Navier slip boundary condition in the open form computational fluid dynamic library, which should give a more realistic behavior of the fluids near the walls. And second, we will verify the boundary conditions implementation with Newtonian and viscoelastic fluids that exhibit wall slip. Let's now see the mathematical formulation we use to implement the wall boundary condition on the open foam framework. For the implementation of the wall slip boundary condition, some assumptions are made. First, the absolute value of the slip velocity is a function of the absolute value of the tangent stress vector at the wall. 
This means that each term has the same magnitude. Second, the slip velocity vector should point in the opposite direction of the tangent stress vector. For that reason, it appears a minus sign in the formula. And finally, on this study, we assume that the function of the tangent stress vector is given either by the linear or nonlinear Navier slip model. Basically, these functions try to model the data obtained from experiments. The factors which precede the magnitude of the tangent stress vector are called the linear and nonlinear slip coefficients, which have the units defined here depending on the linear exponent n. For the numerical implementation, of the slip boundary condition presented before, we used two different approaches, depending on the rheology of the fluid used on the simulations. If the fluid is considered Newtonian, we adopt the local coed flow assumption near the wall, where the wall stress vector tau Vw is computed as the product of the Newtonian viscosity with the shear rate at the wall. The last one being computed as the ratio between the difference of the old slip velocity and the cell center velocity, with the distance vector between the wall and the cell center. If the fluid considered is viscoelastic, we compute the wall stress vector as the inner product between the wall symmetric stress tensor and the normal vector to the wall, where the wall symmetric stress tensor is obtained by a linear extrapolation of the cell center symmetric stre stress tensor. Then, the next step, which is common to both approaches, is to compute the tangent component of the wall stress vector, tau t, which is done by simply removing the normal component. Finally, the wall slip velocity is computed using the second expression with one of the slip expressions. Note that for higher slip coefficients, KL or KNEL, flexation of the wall slip velocity is needed for the stabilization of the numerical code. In this section, the slip boundary conditions will implemented will be verified against analytical solutions. For each type of fluid, Newtonian or viscoelastic, and each type of slip boundary condition, linear or nonlinear, the planar fully developed Poisio flow is studied, where the slip boundary condition is imposed both on the top and bottom walls and the uniform velocity profile is imposed at the inlet of the domain. In all cases, we use a uniform mesh with 6,250 computational cells. For the Newtonian calculations, the Reynolds number, given by the ratio of inertia and viscous force, was fixed equal to 1, and for viscoelastic calculations, the Reynolds number was equal to 0.001 and the Weissenberg number equal to 0 0.03. The simplified pantheon tanner model was used for the polymer rheological behavior, which is a commonly model used to simulate polymer melts and concentrated solutions. The simplified version is given by the following equation, where the linearized stress coefficient without temperature dependence is used see the coefficient of this first term. The second term represents the aldroid upper convective derivative of the stress tensor, and the term on the, last, on the right hand side of the equation is related to the polymeric viscose deformation. In the above equations, epsilon is a free parameter related to the extensional properties of the fluid and defined equal to 0 0.25. Lambda is the relaxation time. Eta P is the polymeric viscosity. And 
TR tau P is the trace of the stress tensor. Hereafter, we will present the results obtained by the implemented numerical code when using the wall slip boundary condition on the Basel flow for Newtonian fluids. Remember that for this type of fluid rheology, the local coet flow was assumed on the implementation of the wall slip boundary condition. The first case study with Newtonian fluids used the linear Navier slip boundary condition on the top and bottom walls of the channel. The analytical solution for the velocity profile across the transversal direction is shown on the first box of the slide, which was found on reference 2 given by Ferrar et al. in 2012. As can be seen, the solution depends on the pressure gradient imposed on flow, which in turn, in turn depends on the linear slip factor KL. On the second box, we present the comparison between the numerical results obtained by the open foam library and the analytical solution when using different values of the slip factor KL. The slip factor range was between 10 power minus 3 and 10 power 3, representative of a lower slip to almost total slip, which induced a uniform velocity profile on the flow, the so-called plug flow. As can be seen on the figure, the numerical results obtained perfectly matches the analytical solution for all slip factors tests. It is important to notice that for the higher slip factors, the relaxation used on the imposed wall slip velocity in each iteration was increased for stabilization purpose. The second case study with Newtonian fluids used the nonlinear Navier slip boundary condition. The analytical solution for the velocity profile across the transversal direction is shown on the first box of the slide, which was found again on reference 2 by, given by Ferraz et al. in 2012. As can be seen, the solution depends on the pressure gradient imposed on the flow and on the nonlinear slip factor coefficient K and L. Additionally, for different values of the nonlinear slip exponent M, we obtain different expressions for the pressure gradient along the, the channel. On the second box, we present the comparison between the numerical results obtained by the Open Foam Library and the analytical solution for two nonlinear slip exponents, M equal to 0 0.5 and M equal to 2. And for each one, we test different values of the nonlinear slip coefficient K and L. Again, slip factor range between lower slip to almost total slip. And as can be seen in both figures, the numerical results obtained perfectly matches the analytical solution for all slip factors used. The results shown for the cal Newtonian calculations allow us to conclude that the local coet approximation made for the implementation of the wall slip boundary condition is able to reproduce the analytical solutions available on the literature. Now we turn to the case studies where viscoelastic fluids are used, for which the technique of the extrapolation of stress tensor was used on the implementation of the wall slip boundary condition. The first case study with viscoelastic fluids used the linear Navier slip boundary condition on the top and bottom walls of the channel. The analytical solution for the velocity profile across the transversal direction is shown on the first box of the slide, which was found on reference 3 of Luis Ferrage et al. in 2012. As can be seen, the solution depends on the Weissenberg number imposed, a measure of the fluid elasticity, and on the linear slip factor KL. On the second box, we present the comparison between the numerical results obtained by the open foam library and the analytical solution when using different values of the slip factor coefficient KL. 
The slip factor range was between 10 power minus 5 and 10 power minus 2, representative of a lower slip to almost total slip. As can be seen on the figure, the numerical results obtained perfectly matched the analytical solution for all slip factor tests. Again, it is important to notice that for the higher slip factor, the relaxation used on the imposed wall slip velocity in each direction was increased for stabilization purpose. The second case study with viscoelastic fluids used the nonlinear Navier slip boundary condition, the analytical solution for the velocity profile across the transversal direction is shown on the first box for the nonlinear exponent m equals to 3. As can be seen, on the solution depends on the pressure gradient imposed on the flow and on the Weissenberg number and also on the nonlinear fact slip factor KNL. On the second box, we present the comparison between the numerical results obtained by the OpenFOAM library and the analytical solution when using the nonlinear slip exponent m equals to 3. Again, slip factor range between lower slip to almost total slip. And as can be seen, the numerical results obtained perfectly match the analytical solution for all slip factor tests. The results shown for the viscoelastic calculations allow us to conclude that the extrapolation of the stress tensor made for the implementation of the wall boundary con slip boundary condition is able to reproduce the analytical solutions available on the literature. The conclusions of the work are now presented. As conclusion of the work, we can state that the Navier linear and nonlinear slip boundary conditions were successfully implemented in the Open Phone Computational Fluid Dynamics Library and verified for the poisil flows of Newtonian and viscoelastic fluids. Finally, the perspectives for future studies are now addressed on the last section of this presentation. On the future, we intend to perform studies on an extrusion die to study the effect of the wall slip on the flow distribution, which can be helpful on industrial context, namely on the optimization of extrusion die design. Thank you for your attention and for the opportunity to present on the online international meeting for users of OpenFone.